98 degrees. You know, I think sometimes we all get <clears throat> so wrapped up in what we're doing that we get blindsided by something that we didn't expect or hadn't anticipated and it trips us up or it makes us fall and then we wonder, oh, how could I have not seen that or, oh, I never do that. Why did I do that? And you know, the reassurance that we have in our relationship with God based upon faith, but also based upon His knowing us better than we know ourselves, is one of recognition that God is greater than we are. So that when Paul said that if our heart condemns us, He is greater than our heart. Because He knows ahead of time what we would have stumbled and tripped on or what we did and knows that we need help and that we're the ones who are discovering and realizing how much we're dependent upon grace and not righteousness because you see the scriptures say that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and it doesn't say that after righteousness has been given unto you freely by Jesus because of his propitiation for the atonement of sin on the cross that you are suddenly made righteous and that you no longer are not a sinner but it says all have sinned because you will sin and you will stumble and you will fall because a righteous man falleth seven times and rises up again so when you fail just don't forget that God already knew so with the same F, when you fail, don't forget, go get forgiveness. Always recognize that God already knew and had already planned for your forgiveness ahead of your failure. <clears throat> the gateway to the kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Beware of placing our Lord as a teacher first. If Jesus is a teacher only, then all he can do is tantalize me by erecting a standard I cannot attain. What is the use of presenting me with the ideal situation that I cannot possibly come near? I am happier without knowing it. What is the good of telling me to be what I can never be? To be pure in heart, to do more than my duty, to be perfectly devoted to God. I must know Jesus Christ as Savior before his teaching has any meaning to me or for me other than that of an ideal which be which leads to despair because I cannot attain it. But when I am born again of the Spirit of God, I know that Jesus Christ did not come to teach only. He came to make me what he teaches I should be, not what I might be and not what I want to be, but what I should be. The redemption means that Jesus Christ can put into any man the disposition that ruled his own life, and all the standards God gives are based on that disposition. We mean the Sermon on the Mount. It is not a high idea or a lofty standard. It is a reality that God creates in us that we become as we allow him to be real in us. The teaching of the Sermon on the Mount produces despair in the natural man, the very thing Jesus means it to do. As long as we have a self-righteous conceited notion that we can carry out our Lord's teachings, God will allow us to go on until we break our ignorance over some obstacle. Then we are willing to come to him as poor paupers and receive from him, blessed are the poor, blessed are the paupers in spirit. That is the first principle of the kingdom of God, recognition of how poor you really are in spiritual matters. The bedrock of Jesus, the bedrock in Jesus Christ's kingdom is poverty, not possessions. It's not what you own, it's not what you have. It's what you do not own and what you need. Not decisions for Jesus Christ, but a sense of absolute futility. I cannot begin to do it. Then Jesus says, blessed are you. That is the entrance. And it does not take a long while to believe we are poor because you find out very fast once you fail how miserable and how poor you really are. 
The knowledge of our own poverty brings us to the moral frontier where Jesus Christ can work. The bottom line in any person's life is that if you see a righteous man and you think he's righteous, he's not. He's not. I'm sorry. No one is righteous. No, not one. God caused us to be imputed with His righteousness that we would become like Him so that we would no longer think that we could become holy or become special or become focused by the people to be lifted up as though we were something unique and different than what they are. Because what He is, is our righteousness. There is nothing in me, there dwelleth no good thing in me. And the same is true with you. You cannot ever look at some great saint and tell me that they didn't have sin in their life. Ever. According to scripture, they most certainly did. And according to the word of God, they most certainly are sinners saved by grace. So when it comes to righteousness and you look at holy men, consider yourself in the same category because they are just as a poor miserable slob of a sinner as you are they just keep it hidden better or maybe then again maybe they don't